What's up, you dirty dogs? Welcome back. I'm Charles at Next Revival and NextRevival.com. Guys, today we are going to be heading out to Diablo MX, a motocross track in Brentwood, California. We are going to be testing out some absolutely top secret moto parts. This product is not yet released and it is just for two strokes. You gotta love that. This product is actually so top secret that I had to sign an NDA in order to receive said product and test. NDA basically just stands for non-disclosure agreement. I'm not supposed to show you the product or talk about any of its features or I can get myself into a bit of a pickle. And like I said, I can promise you, you've never seen this product before. So I am extremely flattered to be a part of this test. And pretty soon I'll be able to actually show you this product but for today we're going to actually go out and test this product now I'll be riding my 2004 Suzuki RM250 for this test today and that's a big deal because a 2004 Suzuki RM250 is not exactly a new bike by any means and so that means that somebody is developing products for these old two-strokes. I'm looking really forward to it. This poor old turd has been sitting in the corner of the shop collecting dust. It went through a move we just endured for several months where it was just sitting on the sidelines doing nothing. So great chance to pull out the old RM250, get it back up to snuff, and bring it out to a track test for you guys. I've got fresh tires, fresh top end, a fresh cylinder bore rehone, clean the power valve, new reeds. This sucker is ready to ride. So let's go ahead and head out to the track. We're gonna spin some laps get the bike hot. We're going to see how the bike's running in its current configuration with the parts it has installed, the way it is just sort of out of the box. It's all freshened up. I know it's going to be running great. So we're going to use that as a baseline and then we're going to test some super top secret sh Let's go. All right, guys, here we are out at Diablo MX with the RM250. I am all suited up. I'm ready to spin some laps. I got a heat cycle in on the RM250. The track is starting to get to the point where the ruts are starting to get flowy, track's starting to dry up a little bit, hook up a little bit more. If you want to learn more about Diablo MX, you can go ahead and check out this video right here. I did a track review on the place, how much it costs, what the track looks like, the soil type. Go ahead and check that out. But for now, now that we got a heat cycle out of the way on the bike, we're going to take the bike out. We're going to talk about how it runs the way it is right now before we do the super top secret product install. So. Thank you for joining me. Let's go spin some laps. And don't go getting all excited. I'm not blazing fast. We're gonna get a feel for the way the bike is right now in its current state. That way we had a good baseline. When I swap out this mystery part, we're gonna see if the bike runs better, if it has more power, less power. How does it react engine wise? I'm super pumped to be a part of this. All right, boys and girls, this is dirt bike time. You ready? It is two stroke dirt bike time. Gonna head out. We got a 20 minute moto. And we're gonna pay close attention to how this bike runs since that's the whole point of this test. Bike's feeling really crisp. Got a fresh top end. Redid the cylinder bore with a bore hose. Cleaned out the power valve. New reeds, tires, MX suspension. Feeling pretty tight overall. The track is all new today. The bike is all new to a degree to me. Feels very different. I'm used to the big 450, so let's see how she goes. So 
on. Okay. So for the purpose of how the bike's running, it's running great. It's got good roll-on power. It has a uh, great power through the mid up top. There's really nothing wrong with it right now. It's not too lean, too rich. The only mods this bike has uh, are a pro circuit pipe, a shorty silencer, uh, V-Force reeds, and it has a nine ounce flywheel weight. I want to say nine ounce. Really, really helpful on a two-stroke, by the way. So anyhow, no complaints. The bike is uh, not flubbering, bogging, uh, inconsistent, running funky, nothing like that. So that's really great. So great baseline test for what I'm about to do to the bike next. The bike feels really, really good. So I'm excited to see what our next mod does to this bad boy. Holy crap, guys. I think it's safe to say that I have lost almost all of my two-stroke skills. They are so light, which is awesome. The track is super dry, and these things are hard to handle when things are slick. So uh, the bike runs great, though. Today is all about this mod. So bike's running great. I've got uh, 40 to 1 mix, 50-50 race pump gas. Jetting is per Pro Circuit spec on their website. We're about sea level. That's the fuel they like to use, the 50-50. Things running perfect. It doesn't have any bobbles down low off the bottom. It doesn't have like a hiccup in the middle where one jetting circuit's going onto the next. And uh, I'm talking about jetting heavily uh, for a reason. Obviously it has a lot to do with how the bike's running overall. Uh, but with the few mods it has, the flywheel weight, brand new reeds, fresh piston, uh, the pipe combo, uh, that, that's it. Um, the bike is running really, 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 really good. So next up, I got 40 minutes to rip this thing apart take a breather. Uh, maybe I'll find some mojo in that time as well, but uh, I have to take the bike apart. I have to get something else into it. And then we're gonna go ahead and test that. So I hope you're as excited as I am. All right, guys, we have the bike torn down real quick. We are getting to the heart of where I need to be to perform this test. Believe it or not, this only takes about five minutes to get a bike or a two stroke. Yeah, most dirt bikes broken down this far. So I am getting down this far because there's something in here that I need to rip out and replace. So, all right, so now we have the carburetor out. And there's really only one reason why I would want to take the carburetor out. That's because we're going to replace it. All right, guys, you ready? Bikes all back together. This has never been seen before. I promise you've never heard of it. This will be the first time for most of you. Check this thing out. Guys, introducing the new Billitron carburetor from Lectron. This is a never before seen, never before used, brand new Billet Electron. It replaces the old model. As you can see, it has some pretty fancy stuff going on on the outside. I was able to use the stock throttle cable. It went right in. That was awesome. It even used the same three millimeter screws on the top to access the slide. So I'm gonna go ahead and test this thing for the first time right now. I'm super honored to be a part of this. I'm excited to share it with you. And as is Electron tradition, let's fill that bowl. Time to let her eat. Guys, that is the all new Electron carburetor. We get to try it for the first time today. I couldn't be more excited to be part of this test. So I haven't used it yet. You just saw me fill the bowl for the first time. I don't know how it's gonna run, but we're gonna strap up. We're gonna head out. The day's gotten a little hotter. You guys already know the bike mods. We're gonna see how this thing runs. And don't worry about the new specs and why you need this versus your old Electron. When we get back to the shop, we're gonna talk about that. Right now, we're just gonna ride it. We're gonna see what happens on the first few laps. We're gonna see if it's too rich, too lean. Does it just make the bike better like the traditional Electron carburetor does? And when we get back to the shop, like I said, we'll talk about all the pros and cons of stock versus the old Electron versus my feelings on this new Electron. So if you're seeing this video, this thing is about to launch or I've been given permission to share it or is live. And in that case, you can head on over to mxrevival.com to read more about it, I'll write something up, just like the video. I'll link it in the description below. And of course, you can always go to Electron and check it out there as well. Let's go ride this bastard. All right, all right, boys and girls. Now you know, this is the reason I'm here today. It took about 40 minutes to install. I actually got lucky and got a little time extension because they watered the track uh, before the Pro Moto. So old, fat, and slow goes out next. Super easy to install. That was awesome. The car rider looks absolutely amazing it looks super high tech which uh 
is pretty cool because when you say high tech and two strokes, you know, as, as they're somewhat of a dying breed, um, that's just awesome. So haven't started it yet. You guys saw me fill the bowl. This is the first start. Let's see how easy it is to start. The bike's hot, so I'm not gonna use the choke. Let's just see what happens. Well, okay. Damn. Wasn't expecting that. I expected a few kicks at least. I haven't adjusted any knobs. I haven't turned a single screw. I haven't adjusted the idle. All I've adjusted is the slack in the throttle cable. Got it to where it kind of felt like the old carburetor where when you let off the throttle, you could hear the slide whack the bottom of the carburetor body. To me, that's closed and that's what I want. So very crisp. So far. Okay, that's really good. How you doing there, bud? No fuel leak. This thing looks sick. I got a couple minutes before my moto, so I'm gonna do a couple tugs on this thing in the parking lot. See what I can hear, see what I can feel. Make sure we got no revving when we turn lock to lock. That would mean that the throttle cable is too tight and that the slide is lifting. We don't want that. We don't want any runaway ribs on the track or anything scary or inconsistent. Kind of the exact opposite of what we're going for. I'm really excited to try this. Now listen, the bike does have a crappy clutch basket in it. It's notched, so it likes to chatter when it takes off. I won't be surprised if it does that, but listen to the engine. Normally when we have a stock carburetor and we're dealing with uh, the bottom end takeoff where you get a little bog, like a pilot jet air screw combo, you get sort of this uh, choppy takeoff. A lot like the clutch basket thing actually, but let's see. All right, kind of hard to tell. You can see the clutch basket is pretty notchy, so. Okay, lift the rear tire right up. Probably about, I don't know, 20% throttle. Nice. Feels good. Compared to the Electrons you guys are running right now, the 38 HVs and the H series, which is the newer 38, uh, I can tell that this Billitron has more pickup, more grunt off the bottom. That's one complaint about the old Lectron is that even though it smooths the bike out and deletes your need for jetting and just generally runs a lot smoother, uh, a lot of guys complain that they have a softer bottom end. So this feels very, very, very crisp. Very, very crisp. Bike's a little warmer. It actually feels like it cleaned up. By feel, it feels like it cleaned up a little bit of richness on the bottom end uh, from the stock PN carburetor, which in my opinion uh, was pretty much spot on. I, I couldn't get it better than that ever. So, so far, so good. So far it has a good brisk tug off the bottom end, which is, uh, I'll go ahead and say that's an improvement over the older Lectron carburetor where they tended to be a little, a little more soft on the bottom. Let's go ride this bad boy. a little on the tight side, the cable. That's okay. Might even feel just a little bit lean. Little bit lean, little bit lean. Now that the 
bike hunt. A little bit leaner. You can, you guys can tell if it's lean by when it's revving. It seems like really high pump. The engine might seem a little tight or something. I got a little rattle out of it. Overall, it feels amazing, but a little bit lean. So. That's one of the pros of the Electron carburetor. If it was lean on a stock carburetor, you take it apart, you pull out the main jet, or you would adjust the clip on the needle. This thing, I should be able to just spin a dial on the outside of the carburetor. Probably that one, not sure yet. I gotta double check. That's probably the idle, that's probably the power jet. I'm not sure if the metering rod is adjustable from the outside yet, I'm not sure. But, for out of the box, uh, this is a lot more crisp than a stock carb. It didn't idle before. Still doesn't, that's okay. We can turn the idle in if we wanted it. I am not a fan of two soak idling. I feel like it gums everything up inside the power valve, exhaust, so on. Ever so slightly lean, but man, the pickup is clean. It goes up hills like a raped ape. freaking just a little hair lean just a little hair that could also be because of the fuel i'm running if you guys are running pump gas this might not be a problem that's such a nice sound This is the new Lectron. First impressions are very, very, very good. It went in with no trouble. It looks amazing. It has way more power off the bottom than the old Lectron, where the old Lectrons used to be soft. So far, so good, very good. A little lean. In fact, when the bike's lean, it's lacking fuel, it gets a little hot. The hotter it gets, the leaner it gets. I can actually smell the exhaust burning a little bit so probably burning off some of that old crap that's in the uh, expansion chamber or the packing in the back but oh i don't know how you guys do it man you guys that ride two strokes all the time or beasts i want to be like you it's a lot of work overall man i'm stoked we will head back to the shop we will talk about this some more uh, i will get some more information i will go ahead and record that for you guys Thank you for watching so far up to this point. Let's get the heck out of here. Let's go talk shop. Oh, I cannot wait to dial that in the rest of the way. Excuse my language, but the new Billitron shoots on the old Electron on the bottom end. Hands down, no question. Once I get that midsection dialed in, I can only imagine it's so much more powerful than the old Electron. To be honest, it feels like a key in carb on the bottom where it has gobs of torque you know the torque you thought you'd have with the old electron after swapping from your stock mikuni or key in usually key in because mikuni's well you guys know anyways um yeah awesome absolutely shits 
on the old Electron's bottom end delivery. I gotta spin some knobs, tune some dials. Uh, that'll be next ride, but for now, let's head back to the shop. Let's go ahead and talk about what I felt, the differences between stock key-in, a good jetted key-in, uh, the fact that you even have to jet a key-in, the old Electron, and the new Billetron. Guys, thank you for being a part of this. This is so fun. Guys, what do you think? A brand new Electron carburetor? The all new Billetron is a freaking work of art. I love the way it looks. I love the way it rode. I have some tiny, tiny tweaks and changes to do to it. But now we're gonna go ahead and talk about what I think about the Billetron versus the older H series or 38 HV Electron. And then of course the stock key and carburetor, which is a really great unit as well. So we'll start with the stock key and carburetor. Now the key and carburetor is a great carburetor. It is really hard to argue with. I don't know how much money has gone into Japanese R&D for years and years and years, but that is something you can't really discredit or mess with. A properly jetted key and carburetor is absolutely amazing. So we know that, but some of you guys hate jets. Some of you guys don't understand jets. Some of you guys like to jet. You still don't want to deal with it. And some of you guys obviously can't jet on a big ride where you have massive elevation changes or temperature swings through the day. And so the Electron is just a natural choice for you guys. I personally really, really enjoy the Electron carburetor. I've been enjoying them for five, six years now. Anything from YZ250 to one of my 250SX. They just work and perform as advertised. It's an amazing product. You get a little extra fuel mileage out of your tank. The bike uses the fuel it needs. It doesn't have excess fuel coming into it. There's only two circuits. Obviously there's no jets. It doesn't care if you go up and down in elevation. It doesn't care about temperature. So if the standard 38HV or Electron H-Series carburetor is so amazing, then why would they bother to develop another one? Well, there are a ton of reasons why, and we're gonna talk about those right now. As good as the old Electron carburetor is it still had some complaints from riders one of the things I noted when I first started using them and eventually just got used to was that right off the bottom the old Electron didn't have that grunt or that hit that the stock key in or a stock carburetor might have had. it was really mellow off the bottom and it ramped up very linear in a very linear fashion so if you had like a graph for example with a curve it wouldn't be power 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 boom power band it would just be straight through the line would go straight across the graph it was just very linear it made two strokes feel kind of like three strokes more four strokey easier to handle more usable power in the event that they were supplying an engine with a previously dirty jetted carburetor with the proper amount of fuel these guys were even getting more power out of their carburetors what i would do to combat that soft feeling on the bottom if you haven't gotten used to it is simply add a tooth up on the rear sprocket that lowers your gearing and gives you a little bit of grunt back it takes a little bit of over rev away at the top of your throttle range but it will give you some down low grunt and it's very useful and it's also really cheap 60 bucks if you you're buying an expensive sprocket. Now the new Billetron, however, it's a 38 millimeter. The choke has been moved to the left instead of the right, like the old carburetor. This thing has gobs of bottom end. It was pretty amazing because that was the first thing I remembered about the old Electron, especially back to back with the Buddies 250SX with the stock Mikuni and good jetting. The Electron was just soft on the bottom, the old Electron versus even the Mikuni and the stock 250SX. This new Billetron, it just grunts like you don't need to do the gear down I just mentioned. The thing rips. So right off the bottom, it feels exactly like a properly jetted Kian. Difference there, Kian has a bunch of jets, Electron does not. So that's a huge bonus. I already mentioned the choke on the left. The old Electron had the choke on the right. It wasn't really a problem. I could always reach the thing. It kind of was like electric start versus kick starting. They both get the job done, but as soon as I'm riding, I don't care about either one of them anyways. But a choke move to the left side on the new Electron is a super huge benefit regardless for most people. People, and definitely a welcome one. Another great thing about the Billetron was on the previous Electron carburetors, you would need the Electron, you would need a Electron cable, throttle cable. This new Electron, you can take the stock throttle cable that's already on your bike and drop it right into the Billetron slide. So it's one component that you no longer need. You can literally just pull your subframe off, plop this carb in, drop your old throttle cable right into the new Billetron, and it's ready to go. Just a little bit of throttle free play adjustment. So that was amazing. I really enjoyed that. So here's the big question, right? Do you keep your stock carburetor, or do you need to run out and replace your current Electron that you're using with the new Billetron from Electron? Well, it depends. Obviously, all of them work just fine. Some a little better than others, and every situation is different. But 
for me, I will be rocking the shit out of this Billitron in all of my two strokes from now on. It has the bottom end grunt of a perfectly jetted key in, except it doesn't have jets like a key in, and the new Billitron is also not going to be sensitive to elevation changes or temperature swings like the stock key in, even if it's well jetted. So that is a huge plus, and it doesn't hurt at all that the Billitron looks absolutely sick, and when you replace your old carburetor with the Billitron, it just looks like you have this gnarly piece of tech in your bike so that's a huge huge bonus for some of you that's going to be all you need some of you guys won't even care but for most people yes the thing looks amazing but it does offer a supreme technological advantage now for you guys who already have electrons in your two strokes do you need to run out and replace your current electron with a billetron again it just depends are you going to sell your bike in a minute get a new two stroke anyways yeah go ahead get the billetron are you tired of your old electron and looking for something new Yes, get the new Billitron. Do you want a much, much stronger bottom end for your current two-stroke that's running your old Electron? Yes, rip out the old Electron, get the Billitron. At the end of the day, all these options work really great, but for me, the Billitron takes the cake. It is the most cutting edge carburetor you can get in a two-stroke. It runs like a perfectly jetted keen, which makes a great amount of power. So the new Billitron runs like one of those, except doesn't need jetting. And as previously mentioned, elevation and temperature aren't going to bother it. And yes, the Billitron absolutely crushes on the bottom end versus the old Electron. All of the other perks and benefits will probably be the same, save for a few extra bonus things I mentioned, like the use of your stock throttle cable and a left side choke. So yes, go buy one if you just want an answer. Now to close out today, I want to actually read you some of the new benefits and features right off of the Electron spec sheet. These are things that I was not allowed to talk about due to the NDA. I'm gonna go ahead and crack this email open from my boy Brooks at Electron. He pretty much runs the show over there. Badass dude, super supportive. If you guys have ever reached out for text support. You've probably spoken to him. And of course, he's the bad mofo that gets me in on these really cool top secret tests. So Brooks, thank you very much. And we're going to go ahead and read out from Brooks' email some of the other benefits and features now that I'm allowed to talk about this with you guys. Here we go. We are releasing a full billet carburetor for 125 through 302 strokes. These will come in 38 millimeter and 39 millimeter taper bores. The 38 millimeter bore is an improved H-series bore design that flows more CFM and higher velocity across all throttle positions. The bottom end grunt is ridiculous. Yes, that turned out to be very accurate. The 39 millimeter is made to be the baddest peak horsepower carb there is. They've got a pretty good track record, so I'm gonna go ahead and say that there's a good chance that is absolutely true. The carburetor you'll be receiving, me, is a 38 setup for a 250 to 300 cc. 2004 RM250. Performance, nothing comes close. It has a massive hit down low and it flows more than our current 38H series for better top end as well. Now in my case, I had a little bit more tweaking and tuning. Mine was a little bit lean on the power jet, which is basically 50% to 100% throttle. So I need to open that screw just a hair and get a little more fuel in there when the bike's wide open. Um, I was hitting sort of a ceiling, if you will. The bike was uh, just a little bit lean. So I know I can squeeze a little bit more over rev uh, out of the top end there, say ripping up a hill or whatever. So I'm going to focus on that uh, next in some of the next rides. Points. New bell geometry to improve hit at low throttle positions and add torque. New H-style billet slide that channels the air toward the mirroring rod for improved response. You guys saw the bike start on the first kick after I installed this thing, so improved power jet routing for faster response. And the power jet is, like I mentioned a second ago, the 50 to 100% throttle range. This thing is basically a hose that runs up to a tapered screw that when the engine generates enough vacuum or suction under load, is actually drawing this fuel right out of the bowl, up into the top of the carbs venturi, and you can adjust with the screw externally how much fuel is entering at that particular point in time. Metering rod is adjustable in eighth turn increments. Now, a lot of you are familiar with the metering rod. It is inside the carburetor. The metering rod controls, let's say, zero to 50% throttle on these carburetors. And then, of course, the metering rod and the power jet blend together somewhere in the middle. Now adjustable in eighth turn increments. Before, it was quarter turn increments. So you have a finer adjustment on this new carburetor as well. Lectron heard you. We did our research, listened to what the public wanted, and built a carburetor to suit that. Major improvements. Shorter height and a 76 millimeter overall length with longer options available. 12 millimeters shorter than an H series. Easier to install, compatible with reed spacers. This was true. There is uh, not a reed spacer 
in my RM250, but if you're one of the YZ guys with a, a spacer before your reed block or between your reed block and your engine, you're all good there. The carburetor is smaller than the old Electron. I have an old Electron in the shop. It's like a cutaway so you can see the guts of it, but side by side with the Billitron, definitely smaller all the way around. That was really cool. Works with stock throttle cable. May have to remove cable lock nut to get desired free play. I didn't have to do that. Uh, all metric hardware, this is also true. The top of the new Billitron had three millimeter uh, Allen head bolts in it, just like the key in that I took out of it. So literally I just used my one tool and popped the top off the stock one. Pop the slide off, pop the cable into the new Billitron slide, drop it in, use the same tool. So there's a Japanese style hardware in it. That was really handy. Choke moved to the left side. Completely new choke design with better seals. We covered that already. It is nice to not have to reach over across the top of your carburetor to the right side of uh, your engine over there, your carburetor, and try and pull up the choke. Bowl drain with integrated G-force kit. I don't really have anything to add to that at this point. Accessible power jet that can be adjusted with your fingers. Okay, that's cool. I could have done that at the track if I thought I didn't need a screwdriver, but I didn't touch that yet so that's the 50 to 100% throttle portion of the carburetor I mentioned a minute ago larger idle screw with finer threads for more precise adjustments proprietary 3.6 millimeter sprung needle seat valve with high flow exit ports that's something in the bowl that's letting fuel into the carburetor so it sounds like they have a, a new tweak or design on that completely new float design billet bowl bracket with integrated vent line holders uh, this was cool this was like when your vent lines drape around the sides of the carburetor and they go into these little double barrel looking holes that are both onto the bottom of the carburetor bolt itself. They're basically just like guides for your hose lines. And then they have this cool like darkened out teaser photo. So when they sent me this email before I got the carb, I was like, oh, what is it? That's so cool. Big mystery. Anyways, it turned out to be uh, an amazing day and an amazing product. So what do you guys think? Do you have any questions or comments for me? If I didn't cover anything in the video, I would be happy to answer your questions in the comments below. I know sometimes I miss stuff. So just let me know and I'll do my best to answer you. If you think it's a common question and I didn't get back to you, maybe it was already answered. Just scan through the comments and you'll figure it out. At any rate, if you're seeing this video, that product is either available now or will be available shortly and I'm allowed to show it to you. I was flattered to be a part of this test. I was so excited to be one of the first people to be able to talk about it with you. It's been gnawing at me. I've been wanting to talk about it. I tried to film a teaser video a couple weeks ago and Brooks was like, no, no teasers. Stop it. Don't publish that. So he shot me down. Uh, I just wanted to give you something. I didn't even mention what it was in the video, but I couldn't. So that's how excited I am about it. And uh, I really appreciate you guys watching today. Please go ahead and drop a like, give me a sub. I would love that. And if you need more information on this carburetor, you can of course go over to electron.com, electronfuelsystems.com, or if you'd like to support MX Revival, we are also a Electron dealer. You can check those out at mxrevival.com. I'm grateful for you guys. I will see you soon. And until then, shred safe.